Chapter 5 Mr Monroe climbed up the fire escape, which led to the roof of the Pepper Pot building. Every so often he paused and listened at the windows. Mr Monroe liked listening to the interesting conversations that went on in the other apartments, but he didn't tell Otterline, as he knew that she wouldn't approve. Mr Monroe stood on the roof of the Pepper Pot building and thought for a long time. It began to rain very heavily. in the rain, Mr Monroe thought about the cold, wet bog in Norway. He remembered how Otterline's parents, Professor and Professor Brown, had found him and had invited him to come home with them to the Pepper Pot building. Professor Brown lent them his nice new raincoat and Professor Brown gave him her sunglasses. The three of them sailed home on the SS Trondheim. To avoid the unwanted attention, they called him Mr Monroe. Although his real name was something in Norwegian that meant small, hairy bog person, there's a picture of him there on the SS Trondheim. From the moment she was born, Otterline and Mr Monroe were inseparable. He took her for walks, he let her brush his hair, even let her give him a bath. But only once. But whatever they did, Otterline's parents knew that as long as Mr Monroe was with her, their daughter would always The rain stopped and Mr Monroe went down the fire escape. He didn't feel sad any longer. He stood on the doormat until he had stopped dripping. It felt good to be out of the rain. It felt good to be far from the bog in Norway. It felt good to be living in the Pepper Pot building. But most of all, it felt good to have Otterline as his best friend. Mr Monroe found Otterline sitting in the Vedermeyer rocking chair. Would you like me to brush your hair? asked Otterline. Mr Monroe nodded. When she had finished, Otterline looked at Mr Monroe for a long time. Then she looked at her notebook. I've got a clever plan, 